It's day two of NFL free agency, and the Philadelphia Eagles have made their second move. Earlier today, they signed backup offensive lineman Matt Hennessy, a Temple University product who is a second-team All-American. And now the Eagles are adding to their receiver core by signing Devontae Parker, formerly of the New England Patriots. He was let go a few days ago, and it is going to be a one-year, $4.69 million deal. It's fully guaranteed, but hold up. Before he start going crazy, the Eagles are barely paying him anything for a player who is no doubt going to be a backup wide receiver for this team. And I have a lot of thoughts about this acquisition here. Adam Schefter breaking the news just moments ago on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon that the Eagles and former Patriots wide receiver Devontae Parker reached agreement on a one-year $4.69 million fully guaranteed deal of which... This is the key point here. The Eagles are only paying him $1.2 million, with New England paying the rest. This quote coming from Devontae Parker's agent, Devontae is thrilled and grateful to become a Philadelphia Eagle and to help this elite organization win a championship. As for my thoughts on this move, stay tuned for that, but first... Make sure you continue to tune in to everything that we're doing. We put out four shows on Eagles now on Monday. This is our second show up on the channel here on Tuesday. We've been live for a few hours. If you want entertaining, insightful, informative, interactive Eagles content on the daily year-round, we have you covered right here on Eagles Now. As for my thoughts and why you've seen me rock a little bit of a smile and a smirk here, Parker was a first-round pick out of Louisville by the Miami Dolphins in the 2015 draft. He has solid size, 6'3", 215. He can climb the ladder. He can go up and get it. And the Eagles could use a larger receiving threat who can play X, who can play in the slot, in addition and alongside A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. I'm not even sure if Devontae Parker for sure is going to make this football team because this 2024 receiving class is loaded. But what I find funny, and this is pretty hilarious, you have to admit, while Devontae Parker is a go-up-and-get-it jump ball type of wide receiver with solid size if you throw him that fade ball on the sideline, he has been dead last according to next-gen stats, in wide receiver separation in each of the last four years. Now, you look at his numbers from 2023 on that awful Patriots offense, but let me read you out these numbers. In 2020, wide receiver separation, 132 out of 132. 2021, 127 out of 127. 2022, 122 out of 122, 2023, 115 out of 115. It's kind of impressive that he's been dead last in separation in four consecutive years. So he doesn't have long speed. He doesn't have speed in general. He really is throw it up to him, hope that he can bring down the 50-50, throw him that back shoulder, and you hope for the best. These are his numbers over the last four years. And that 2020 season isn't bad. And some of the receptions to yard numbers are not bad because 17.4 yards per catch in 2022 on that bad Patriots offense with subpar quarterback play, not awful. He has one really, really good year of production. And that came in 2019 with the Miami Dolphins when he played 16 games, he started 14 of them, he had 72 catches, 128 targets though, 16.7 uh, yards per catch, and he had 1,200 yards with nine touchdowns. But he has not come close to that type of production at any other season in his NFL career. The closest coming the following year in 2020 when he had 793 catches. And the separation issues are an issue for him. If he's a depth-wide receiver, which is obviously what he's going to be, that's fine. And when you're giving him basically nothing, 
pretty much vet min money at $1.2 million. You take a chance on a player who in this offense can give you a build and some size that you don't necessarily have from some of the other wideouts. I know A.J. Brown is tall. He's physical, right? But he's also fast. He's also shifty. He's also elusive. He is a very good deep threat, can pull away, and he can separate. So this game, a little bit different. He's like a poor man's Alshon Jeffrey to a certain degree, and he's not even that tall. So grade the signing here. C grade for me. I mean, it's average. You're not paying him anything. A, B, C, D, or F. Those are my thoughts. You let me know down in the comment section here. As for the Eagles free agency tracker up to this point, it's about 4.15 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. Brandon Graham, Eagles legend, 15th season. He's returning one-year deal. Landon Dickerson gets the highest paid deal ever in the history of football for a guard. Four-year, $84 million deal. It's the $21 million in average annual value that's setting that record 50 mil guaranteed. The Eagles were said to be hot on Josh, uh, Bryce Huff. Josh Huff, Eagles legend who sucked. Bryce Huff, three years, $51.1 million, $34 million in guaranteed money. That checks out to about $17 million, coming off 10 sacks, 67 pressures while playing less than 50% of the snaps. An analytical darling, Howie Roseman, is a Howie Roseman type of player. Saquon Barkley. Three years, $37.75 million, $26 million in guaranteed money. Howie Roseman investing in a running back for the first time since LaShawn McCoy. He was not leading football ops when the Eagles signed DeMarco Murray. And you might look at 38 mil running back. This is coming from the leader of the pack of don't pay running backs big money. But you basically have to look at this as a two-year deal, $13 million per. Would you rather pay $8 million, 15 mil guaranteed for DeAndre Swift, or $26 million guaranteed, 13 million per, for Saquon Barkley? I'll take the chance on Saquon Barkley, and I've warmed up to this deal a little bit because the Eagles' offensive line is so much better as compared to the Giants' offensive line, which stinks. It's awful, and it's been bad for a really, really long time. These numbers are pretty crazy. I watched him Saquon Barkley tape on Monday night, and his start to stop quickness, jump cut ability, explosion, power, speed, all still there. He's going to join an offense alongside some really good weapons. Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, and the run block win percentage via ESPN. Giants in 2023, 31st, and in 2022, ranked 26th. The Eagles run block win percentage in 2023 was first, and in 2022, they rank second. So behind a good offensive line, pass catcher, ball carrier, very good uh, blocker in the pass game. I like the Saquon deal. And then you look at these three other moves. Zach Bond listed as a linebacker, but pretty much going to be a blitzer and a pass rusher as a backup who can play special teams. One year, three and a half. Matt Hennessy. The pro football focus grades, as we talked about a little bit earlier on the show, we have a full breakdown on the channel. Really good when he's been able to stay healthy. Last two years, though, has not been able to stay healthy. And then Devontae Parker, one year, $4.69 million deal, but the Patriots eating a lot of that salary. Make sure you subscribe. We have you covered with the best coverage right here on YouTube. Thanks to everybody for watching. And keep it locked here. Because anytime the Eagles make a move, we're going to talk about it.